I have been accorded with great opportunity to write an introduction for this book. I am indeed overwhelmed and say a big thank you. Each individual, whatever color or religion he or she belongs to, has a lot to offer and contribute to make this world a beautiful place to live in. I am Indian, Hindu and a disabled elected councillor of London Borough of Sutton. The love and respect along with needed assistance I am receiving from all around me prove that Sutton is a very helpful and diverse borough. Nothing can be achieved single-handedly. The involvement of different communities representing diverse voices will crown Sutton to lead in heritage and wider projects more efficiently. The race between able and disabled can only be narrowed when put on a common platform and handled equally. Certain cultural services are working to provide a condensive platform for those living with different forms of disability, proving that disability is not inability. Certain mancap work hard to organize activities for residents living with different learning disabilities. I am certain this book will provide a revolving ground in making certain the best place to live in. Five hundred years of Whitehall. Can you imagine living? in a 500-year-old house. What would it be like to live surrounded by so much history? Whitehall is one of the oldest and most important buildings in Sutton. Its original use is still debated. Some say that it started out as a farmhouse. Research suggests that a little later, by 1644, the house became the original location for Cheam School. According to local legend, it even has a royal connection. Did Queen Elizabeth I hold a meeting of her advisers there during a hunting trip to nearby Nonsuch Palace? Between 1742 and 1963, Whitehall was home to the Killick family. A very long time for a house to belong to just one family. The last descendant of the family sold the house to the borough of Sutton and Cheam, as it was called then. Whitehall Historic House began its new life as a museum in 1978. In early 2020, Sutton Mencap imagined how life would be in this extraordinary building. This book is a collection of drawings, collages and stories depicting Whitehall as a lively and possibly haunted home in 2020. At Home in Whitehall, an alternative guide to Whitehall Historic House. At Home in Whitehall is a collection of collages and drawings produced by Sutton Mencap inspired by their experience of Whitehall Historic House in Cheam. These were created over four workshops. Over the weeks, we imagined ourselves as residents of Whitehall. We explored the Killick family who lived in Whitehall for 200 years. We even played music and created a story about ghosts and love, featuring all sorts of plot twists. The book is divided in two parts, following the progression of the workshops. The first part features work inspired by objects, both objects found in the museum or brought from home, and photography. The second part comprises the great Whitehall ghost mystery story, a story put together and illustrated by project participants in our final session. At Home in Whitehall was produced as part of Know Our Place, Saving 
and share in Whitehall, a wider project funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund, the London Borough of Sutton and the Friends of Whitehall. Project Participants Alana Ben Ben B Charlie D Chalice Eloise Gemma Gray Gary Ellie H Julia Nijan Kunalan Laura Mitchell Robert Schiavetta Sammy and Tammy The project volunteer was Lois South The project facilitator was Richard Neville Making ourselves at home in our early sessions, we explored different rooms and spaces around Whitehall, from what used to be the parlour to the attics and the garden. We set our base in the activity room and started by drawing objects that drew our attention while exploring. We then brought and photographed our own objects from home and imagined how these would be placed around Whitehall if we lived here. We looked at the Killick family albums and talked about life in Cheam through the centuries. Finally, we brought everything together by creating collages and drawings. Collage and drawing by Gemma, featuring the medieval skull found in the parlour. Here, seen enjoying some cereal from the breakfast bowl she brought. Collage and drawing by Gary, featuring his mug, the saddle found in the attic, Jake the horse, and a boy playing tennis in Whitehall's garden in the early 20th century. Robert's collage features objects found in the attic, ex-residents, pets included, and the ghost skeleton haunting the parlour. David brought together a suitcase and cricket bat found in the attics, displays from the Nonsuch room and the pan he brought from home, where we cooked a meal to share with the skeleton. Ellie kept meticulous notes about everything we saw and did in Whitehall. She brought her notebook upstairs to the attics, in the room currently dedicated to writer and merchant James Bovey. Nijan created a Whitehall's own version of Van Gogh's Starry Night, adding the vintage mobile phone he brought from home. In the image he chose, we can see the back of Whitehall and the tea room door. Ben combined the porcelain dog figure he brought with the dogs often found in the old family albums. You can also spot some of the curiosities found in the attics and lots of different hats. Laura brought together her favourite gadgets that she uses to watch films and TV series and an archival image of furniture that used to be in the attic. The Great Whitehall Ghost Mystery Story In our final meeting at Whitehall, we talked about everything we had done so far and decided to create and star in our own story taking place in our new home. We were inspired by adventure and action films but most importantly, by our previous explorations and experiences of the house. The story you are about to hear 
was created through play and live reenactment and then illustrated. We are in Whitehall's parlour and a bad guy has got into the house. It's Laura and she's got a gun. Tammy comes to arrest her and take her to prison. There's a knock on the door. There's no one there. It must be a ghost. The ghost is a dark shadow. You can't see it. You don't know if it's there, said Robert. The ghost has to be defeated, but only a bad guy can do it. We decide to let Laura out of prison. Laura leads everyone on the search for the ghost. Come on, I've got a gun, she shouts. We all go looking for the ghost in Whitehall. First, we search the Tudor Hall. Is it in the fireplace? Under the table? It's gone again. Let's look in the attic, suggests Ellie. Laura leads us all upstairs. We get to the first floor and then we reach the attic. We look around the attic, we look in the corners, then up into the rafters, then we hear a sound. It's an owl. Let's give it some meat, Gary says. The ghost isn't here, Ben says. Suddenly, we hear some noises coming from downstairs. The ghost must be in the activity room. When we get there, Julia says, It's cold here. That means there's a ghost. I can hear some noises coming from over there, says David, pointing at a board by the wall. There is something standing behind it. It's Laura, David says. Laura comes out from behind the board and the mystery is solved. Laura is the ghost. I've got a gun. Give me your money and your phones, she says. Laura will give you a flower instead, we say. We will buy you a ticket to go to Australia, business class. Laura starts to smile and says, I will give you my heart. The story ends. Everyone has become friends in Whitehall.